stand clear. 100% Wild Podcast. So for all you listeners, hello and welcome to Definitely Not Your Favorite Outdoor Podcast. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the Drury Outdoors 100% Wild Podcast. This is episode number 305, and as always, it's powered by Deer Cast. You're Tim Chelswick. You are Matt Drury. I was absent from the last podcast. Guys, I apologize. Let's move on. <laughs> That's right. You were gone. You, you didn't even notice it, did you? Man, weird. I wonder about those audience members. I, the- <laughs> I hadn't heard Matt speak up in a while here. I wonder I wonder why. Yes. It, it was, was unavoidable. Yeah. I mean, sick kids. What are you going to do? Yeah. That time of year. Yeah. So. 100%. Hey, I uh, was making some backstrap a couple nights ago. Mm. Actually, last night uh, from a doe I shot here recently, and uh, I screwed it up big time. What'd you, you do? You ever tried to brine a steak? No. <laughs> of course. Usually, you use... usually it's fixed for me. <laughs> Someone brings it to you on a plate. Yeah. It's better that way. Well, I love brining steaks. It, it breaks down a lot of the, like, the connective tissue and stuff, makes it more tender, brings out the flavor. Well, usually you do it with coarse kosher salt. All I had was fine granulated. Um, I'm pretty wealthy, so I can afford the granulated salt. Yeah, big a big container of it, I'm a sure. Bit, mm-hmm. <laughs> um, I didn't have the coarse. I used the granulated. Rich in salt. And <laughs> it was super salty. Ah. Like ranch dressing would not solve it. Ooh. So... Hey Beth, come try this. <laughs> so Bo took a he took a bite and he was like, bleh, 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 and he's like rolling <laughs> off his tongue. And Sophie's got a pretty like she's got a wide palate. She doesn't mind yeah, she, yeah. salty stuff. She could not even. She's like dunking it in rants because she loves. She calls them deer patties. Yeah, she couldn't make them work. She so really screwed it up. So I was like, can I dip them in water? Well, <laughs> if I know you, you're still gonna eat them though, right? I'll figure something out. <laughs> Put them right. in something. That's right. Uh, Leave no uh, nothing behind. I felt bad. Well, hey, this week we're talking about taxidermy. We've got a turkey on a roof. Oh, for the, for the real, real wild clip? It's a weird... Is it? It's a really weird oh, I look forward to wild seeing. clip. We've got a question uh, about the um, uh, the annual weather cycles in relation to food plot planting. Okay. and Like then, uh, El Nino, La Nina, like that kind of weather cycle? Or? Yes. And if you don't habla espanol, yeah. El Nino means... Mm. <laughs> The Nino. The Nino. <laughs> I, there you go. I didn't even. That's zero years of that's, Spanish class. <laughs> well, that's Chris. That, that's a Chris Farley throwback. Is it? Yeah. No, I missed it. Yo soy el Nino. <laughs> that's Spanish for I am the Nino. Oh, gotcha. <laughs> it's the boy. Bl- blew right past the girl. Me. Happens usually around Christmas time. Okay. Anyways, if you're interested in what what food plot planning is going to look like, one of our listeners had a question about that. All right. Asking to mark. And then, of course, we got the wildlife word. And you guys knocked it out of the park and dropped a ton of reviews for us hey, in Apple sweet. Podcasts. So Thank we really you. appreciate it. We that. asked, they delivered. Just like the true blue fans that we knew that they were mm-hmm. all mm-hmm. along. I'm sorry for everything I said about them I, now. I, take I don't it even back. remember. We've said so many bad things about our listeners and viewers yeah. that I don't even recall which one that specifically was, Tim. Yeah. Well, I've got chapter and verse. All right, so mm, taxidermy. We don't know anything about it this year, but there have been years in the past where we've gotten taxidermy work done. <laughs> Actually, I'm in the thick of a taxidermy quandary right now, trying to figure out what pose from a deer you killed two falls ago. <laughs> yes, that's indeed. one of the questions I'd like to get into today. The with deer our guest. That never dies. So we've got John Dittmer from Spring Creek Taxidermy. The man knows the value of two hundred dollars. <laughs> at least what's up john two hundred dollar taxidermy man that's gonna look good two hundred dollars is two hundred dollars hey so so we go way back with john john was on dream season was it uh, working, working man, man. Yeah, yeah working man i think that, that was, what was year it, was that ah shit was it the year before or after celebrity 1973 <laughs> 74 i think was that uh yeah i don't uh 10 or 11, somewhere in there. Yeah, yeah, been a while. 
So <laughs> that was a good time. That, that, was, that was a fun cast too. And I mean, we, you know, there were some great characters on it and you guys went on to have uh, start your own show uh, that that cast went on and started their own show after that. And, and of course, since then some have kind of split off and done their own things, but that was a, uh, it was a fun year. And, and you know, none yeah, of those year I got, I got fired from you guys fired. <laughs> well, we fired everybody. I didn't make the pro staff. I wasn't good enough. Ah. No, nobody did though. <laughs> <laughs> did they? I don't think. A couple people did. Yeah, Martin Blair did. Oh well, hey, look, we can't be. Yeah. <laughs> look, let's not look back on that. <laughs> I think it was because they were polarizing. That's Southern attitude about uh, Alabama football just won a won them hey, over. It's, it's all good. Everything happens for a reason. So you at that time were you just kind of dabbling in taxidermy, or were you full well, on in it yet? I was full on in it. I started taxidermy in 2001. Mm -hmm. um, I was in college at the time, but I'd gone on a buffalo hunt out in South Dakota. And the guy that I stayed with uh, was a taxidermist. I thought that was just the neatest thing. He had mounts everywhere, every kind of animal you could think of. Uh, and I was like, dude, I'm going to do this. this. This looks awesome. So I came home. I put up a flyer in Walmart for, I think it was like maybe 285 bucks or about your $200. <laughs> Discount taxidermy. In business. <laughs> and I had like 30 something deer mounts to oh. mount before I'd ever even touched one. Oh boy. No idea uh, do some so experimenting. I, I still see a few of those every once in a while up on a wall. I'm like, oh, uh, that looks like You ever effect. offer to redo any of them? <laughs> I have, no, and they all, they won't do it. They're like, nope, I got an original. Yeah. <laughs> this is a Picasso. Wow. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> ears not there. Yeah, yeah, they're pretty brutal too. So yeah, 01 is when I started and then, when I graduated college, that would have been maybe in 05. I was on the five-year plan. It might have wow. been the six-year plan. I'm not even sure. Ooh, scenic but, tour. Uh, when I got out of the that, doctor I was in like, taxidermy. Wow. <laughs> I just stuck with taxidermy. Yeah, I was, I'm a criminal justice major, so it was either cop or taxidermy. And I was like, <laughs> dude, I'm already making pretty decent money. So um, I just stuck with it. And yeah, this is uh, year 20. Something, I guess. Somebody do the math out there. And we should say, John does all of Mark and Terry's taxidermy at this point. It pretty much. Yeah, it's true. I've been trying to pick up Tim and Matt, but. <laughs> well, we have okay. to kill something. Do we, I mean, do we have. They must have a guy. <laughs> you know what? Jeez. I haven't needed a guy in quite some time. <laughs> That's the, the problem. <laughs> I'm way this year. <laughs> How are you with squirrels? <laughs> <laughs> I, I just do uh, white tails. <laughs> um, <laughs> I need, I need a squirrel guy. I need a squirrel guy. Yeah. <laughs> I could hook you up with a squirrel guy. But, so yeah. the, the process, you know, at the end of the year here, because Tim briefly touched on it, he's got a deer that he killed in the fall of 21. Mm -hmm. And it was towards the end of that season. Yeah, like late November. Yeah. So, well, okay. So a little earlier than I recalled. But when you get a deer, when you get a, somebody cup brings a deer in that late, are even later what are the expectations and i'm sure this is different for every taxidermist and based on how much work they have but how behind are you like how, how far down the chain is that deer until you get to it sure um right now so i've scaled back quite a bit i used to do almost 300 heads a year oh, uh, i'm a one-man show i have been i picked up a kid that just got out of high school and he's been with me for a year he's great but um, I used to do 300 heads and I'm down to about a hundred heads a year. Uh, now I'll do, I do 30 replica, <laughs> replica antlers. So I build antlers. I'll, I'll replicate a set of big antlers. So I do mainly that. Uh, so a hundred heads is really not that hard, but it'll still take me the, the full season. So if I get one in November, it'll be done by the next November. Um, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That's if pretty it's tough. not, uh, then it's, November is, it's, it's busy. You can't do anything in November, but skin deer and yeah. tan hide. So then it pushes off into, in the following January or February. Do so. you do that tanning in house or do you send it out? I do. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, I do. I do it. Every, I, main reason. So I have sent it off before one year. I, I was just thinking, Hey, this will make things quicker, faster. Uh, I don't know about better, but I sent it off and what you got to understand is if you send it off, it might be eight months, 10 months to get your hides back yeah. and then you can start mounting them. So if you're doing a hundred heads, 
you can't start until say August comes around when you get your hides back. Um, there's some tanneries that will send you 10 hides here and 10 there. So you can kind of trickle through, through your deer master at the season. But, um, that issue aside, I've sent them off and had them come back with holes cut in it. You know, the ears, the eyelids are, you know, cut or the nose is busted out. And I just prefer to do it all myself. So if I make a mistake, it's on me, which, you know, I, I, I rarely do, but it, when you pay for something like a, a tanned hide and it comes back messed up, <laughs> it's a double salt in the wound. Yeah, no doubt. A, a, a friend of mine was wondering, and his name isn't important, but if you do anything with antler augmentation, like can you add some points here and there? <laughs> I'm asking for a friend of mine. That, like, well, no what if you're starting here, with zero? You what if it's know. just a slick Yeah, like head. If, if it's a doe or something, can you, I don't know. I'm curious. <laughs> so I, I have plenty of those stories, yes. And it's a real thing. Um, I had a guy this year bring me as a perfect eight pointer and uh, the G twos came up. One was probably 13 inches. The other one was probably nine. And then it had like a, uh, the tip of it was kind of curled over on one side, the nine inch side. Uh -huh. And he said, he's like, do you fix antlers? I'm like, well, yeah, I can, I can fix anything. He said, well, that time on that side is busted off. I'd like you to even it up. And it's obviously not busted it off. It's it's just fine. I'm lying, sir. So anyway, I'm cutting that curl off and adding another three wow. inches. On oh my goodness! <laughs> but that's shade. I mean, you know, I, like I would people, not feel comfortable. Who gives a shit? Like really? Yeah. Like why would you care that much? But it's his, I guess. But yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm I can just imagine it. him uh, being like, "Yeah, uh, appreciate the symmetry on that buck." I, don't, I mean, look at that. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah like, what's he, the payoff? Nah. I don't know. What's scary is like, Hey, if you actually take like, you know, people enter these into contests at like, you know, the Iowa deer oh, classic yeah, yeah. or these types of things. Like you think, well, <laughs> can there be people cheating out there it's about like it? Performance enhancing drugs. I've seen drugs. like John's work. You wouldn't really know. You won't know. You Those will replicas not, yeah. You he, can't tell the replicas are freaking identical. That's crazy. John. Uh, <laughs> I've had, uh, this is another scenario, but, I've had a, you know, like a one horn deer, the other side is broke off somewhere along the main beam. It might be down low or it might be, you know, from the G2 forward, but that's pretty common to have like a whole side rebuilt. Um, I do three or four of those a year just, and guys will send them in, you know, a, a lot of my work isn't local. They'll, they'll ship it in and I'll ship it back out. Uh -huh. I mean, they come from all over the country to, to have done. So, uh, they'll, they'll reach out on Facebook say, Hey, I got this deer. They'll send me a picture. I'm like, all right. <laughs> yeah. If you want, if you want a whole nother side, we can build it. So Jeez. Um, now, one, do they have trail camera pictures of yeah, the other side? Yeah. Typically I had a couple, um, that just wanted it mirrored, which, you know, when you don't know what it is, this guy had like, it was like a hundred inch typical side. So it's, wow. I mean, a world-class typical side. And he had a, hundred inch side put on the other side to match up. So, but who knows what it was on the other side. So when you're doing replicas, I understand, you know, and you, we did a video piece with you once for, was it the Goliath or danger? One of uh, danger. danger. Yeah. Danger. Was danger yeah. I think it's on our YouTube channel and probably it in Deercast yeah. as well. And that was a really cool piece. And, and you kind of show a little bit in like a, you know, in, in a sped up way of how you do the replica and all that. And I get it there, how you do a replica. How would you do it where you had nothing to start with? Like, how do you build that side? Yeah, it, uh, there's a couple ways to do it. The hard way to do it is to just build it off a of wire. So you'd have hard wire come out and you kind of shape the main beam and then you bring up a wire for a G2 or three and, and so on. And then it'd be a two-part epoxy that you would literally just hand sculpt the entire antler. Um, I don't like to do that. That that's, it just takes so much time. Uh, and I think the result isn't as good as this next step. I would take, uh, I've got like a thousand replicas, uh, in stock. So when a guy has a replica made, I'll keep the, the mold in case he ever wants another one. So I'll go through my molds and I'll find something that's pretty similar to what I'm needing to pour. And then I'll pour that and then I'll start altering that. If I need to have a taller tine, I'll, I'll add more time length or cut tines off. But at least I'll have some bones to go off of. And uh, 
I don't know. That that's just the way I prefer to do it. And when I go to paint it, it's more authentic. You know, if you look at the base of a deer, like down low, it's got all the 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 nods all over it, mm-hmm. all the you know when they're shredding trees, just got burrs everywhere. You can't hand build that. That's I mean, you could, but you'd be there for months on end, and you wouldn't make any money. Yeah. So that I feel like you should use a uh, a cast and pour that because you're going to get. I mean, it's going to look real. You're not going to know the difference. So uh, I mean, it's really it's, it's art. <laughs> you, you know, you're creating something. You're you're painting it. You're sculpting it. Like that's it's like the show. It's a lot like this show. It's art. No, it's incredible, really. I mean, how? So when it comes to that, is that more? I assume it's more costly as far as like, hey, if I came to you and I needed you to do a, you know, create a side or do a replica, that's a that's probably pretty costly, isn't it? Based on the time consumption on your end, um, it, it, it varies. So uh, just I have a general price range on on say a replica. If you had a two hundred inch deer, it's about two thousand bucks. Yeah. So um, that gets your replica, and then anything any more pours after that, they get less expensive. I lost you there. Yeah, for I got a second. you back. Yeah. Yeah, it gets less expensive because my mold is already poured. Now all I have to do is pour another set and paint another set. So. Um, any kind of repairs is based on what needs to be, how difficult it is, how much time's getting uh, made. But, you know, an average time might be, it might be a hundred bucks a time, something like that. Mm-hmm. You know, if it's a full time. Yeah. How, have you seen this? It's I've, I guess maybe I've seen like ads for it on my social feed, but <clears throat> of, um, <clears throat> it's basically an app where you can scan somebody comes in and and they scan your deer head and then they got a file of your deer head in case you have a fire. It can, then you can have a replica built. Have you tied those two things together yet where you're taking your replicas and you're creating, you know, I'm just thinking you have a hundred or 200 or how many ever of these replica, um, mold sitting there. What if you ever had a fire or is there another backup system to it? No, I'm screwed if I have a fire. <laughs> no, uh, the the 3D stuff is interesting. I I looked into it one time, and uh, I it just for me it didn't it doesn't make sense to do it. Um, I think it's a great idea if you're gonna uh, have a just a some security that if your house burns down, you have all your deer covered because it's not feasible to go have have me do. 15 different replicas from deer that you've shot just in case your house burns down. Um, so in that case, the 3d guy is going to print them out and color them and send them to you. And yeah, you have something that's pretty close. And the reason I say pretty close is it's talking about like all the burrs, like all the detail, it's impossible to get a 3d print to do exactly that. Um, I think it's going to be pretty close, but what I do is an exact replica. It's, it's literally a silicone, silicone mold that i mean even if you have a hairline fracture going through the antler it's going to pick that up in my mold as a 3d scanner would do just scan right over that you you know you wouldn't see it Hmm, uh so as far as what i do mine are exactly the same i feel like the 3d is going to be pretty dang close to the same um are are there advancements like that that have changed in the 20 some odd years you've done taxidermy that that's really changed it for you or, or improved it or made it easier or, you know, I, I know zero about taxidermy, so I don't know what's <laughs> out there and available, but well, I'll run you through the, uh, through the start to finish, uh, pretty easily here, but really the answer is no. Um, so you have a, a guy brings a deer in, I'm going to tape it off of the deer. So he might bring the whole deer in. I got it hanging up. I pull the cape off and then I'm left with a deer with, typically is just the head inside the cape. Uh, from there, I pull the, the cape off of the skull. I cut the skull cap out. So now I got a rack with a skull cap and a cape just hanging loose. From there, um, let's fast forward to is, if I was going to tan this right away. Um, I have to turn the ears inside out. Okay. Um, I've got to take the eyes. You can just imagine and take a razor and go around the eyes and thin those down nice and thin. And you kind of split those open. Same with the nose and the lip line. Because, you know, if you grab a, a lip line, it might be uh, three quarters of an inch thick. Well, you need that to be paper thin. 
So I would take a razor and I'd cut all the way around the lip line and the eyes and get that nice and thin. And then I'm going to take all the red meat off. So the red meat uh, obviously is, is no good. So take all the red meat off and then salt that hide. Uh, so from salting it, I'll, I'll salt it just hard as a rock. The, the hide will be literally stiff as a board. Uh, from there, I'll rehydrate it and start the tanning process. Um, that, you know, as far as advancements, there are better tans than there were probably, you know, 30 years ago or whatever. So uh, I, I do a, a real tan. There's fake, I call them fake tans, but there's a quick tan you could tan in a bucket in a couple of days. Um, I don't do that. I'll soak mine in, in either mirac acid or citric acid or a combination for a few days. That plumps the hide up nice and thick. Mm -hmm. And then I've got a big wheel. Let's say it's like a 12 inch round wheel. You call it a round knife. It's got a, a, a lip on it at an angle. And I'll drag this hide across mm -hmm. this wheel, shaving that hide down nice and thin. I mean, it's going to be paper thin when I'm done with it. And the reason you want to do that is, when you have a form and you slide this hide over your styrofoam form, if you got a thick hide, it's not going to suck into any detail. It's just going to be just round. It's not going to want to hold detail. So how you get good details to have a good thin hide. So that being said, the hide is thin. Now you have to have a good tan because if you don't have a good tan, when it goes to dry, it's going to want to shrink. And any of that detail you have, it's just going to pop off of that detail. So you need to have a hide that is tanned properly as well. And then you have your form, which I would have measured off of the carcass that came in, or I could measure it off of the tan hide. And then you have the form that you guys picked out. Say Tammy's looking for uh, what he wants for a form now. So we would talk of, you know, what you want, left turn, right turn, full sneak, whatever, yeah, you know. Th semi thanks for your suggestion, John. Yeah, yeah, full body is what I was uh, was out thinking be going in for your buck from last year, two years ago. I didn't, uh, I didn't take them out accordingly. Yeah. Yes, and then we're gonna glue that that form down with. There's a, there a few different glues that I, I like to use, but one of them is just a simple wallpaper paste, hmm. and the stuff is wicked. I mean, when it dries, you're not getting the hide off of it, but that glue will suck that hide down to the form, and so you're gonna have just wherever it's sitting it's going to stay it's not going to shrink and move i mean it's really going to stay where it's at and that's that's important because when you walk away and you come back and it looks different uh that's you know that's obviously not good yeah um so there's really no advancement in that that's just the way it goes but there's proper ways to do to 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 do it along the way i know there's some guys that are just doing it for fun and they'll use what's called a dry preservative basically it's putting um like a powder on top of the hide and it dries, it basically air dries. Um, that is going to look good for a while. Um, maybe, <laughs> but it's definitely going to go bad at some point, you know, it's just going to rot. Mm -hmm. uh, so some people dry preserve, use dry preservatives, but um, I almost think, I mean, I don't know how much that guy would charge, but it's going to be less because there's less work to it. Maybe if you've got a $500 deer mat, he's probably doing a dry preserve because there's just no way that you could afford to, to have, I mean, it, it costs 150 bucks to have a tan, a uh, high tan, hmm. like from a tannery. So you add that into your overhead and you kind of understand <laughs> that you get what you pay for sure. in a mound. Yeah. Is, is taxidermy becoming a kind of a dying art or is there still plenty of people out there, you know, cause it, cause here's one thing I often think about that, you know, the time that it takes to get one back and it's like, well, there's less taxidermists out there probably doing it. You know, it's not that there's necessarily more hunters, you know, I, I, maybe there's more trophy hunters than there were 30 years ago. Yeah. Um, what my, the way I, I guess, think about it is there's less good taxidermists. There's that's, there's no doubt about that. I, you really have to be in it, in it full time to, to make it a priority. Uh, I think there's, there's great part-time tax thermos out there, but if you're going to take in, if you're going to be part-time and you, you, if you take in 20 heads, that's not a big deal. But if you're part-time, you got a full-time job and then you take in a hundred heads or 200 heads, when are, when are you going to mount those up? It's not your priority. So, um, I do it full-time. I've been doing it full-time for 20 years or whatever. And, 
Um, I mean, it's just, that's just what it is. That's what it, what it takes to have that be the priority. Cause yeah, there's guys, I know guys, I mean, I, I used to be, when I was doing 300 heads, I was a couple years backed up. It's cause I'm a one man show doing 300 heads. Mm-hmm. Um, at some point you got to sleep. Um, and you don't want your guy to rush cause it's going to come back probably not looking like you're expecting yeah. it to look like. So, um, yeah, I don't, I don't know. Do you ever there, get but. just a, a situation where someone brings you a head that's already been at the taxidermist and it just was, they just screwed it up. You know, it was a nightmare. Oh yeah. Your dad brought me one. <laughs> it's funny. You say that because I got two. <laughs> we were using the same guy. And, yeah, he said. Yeah, yeah, he said, bring them. Uh, I, I'll take care of it for you. Cause but uh, yeah, it it does happen. And it, it every scenario that I know of, it's been a really good taxidermist in the past that you should trust him with it, and likely somebody else mounted those deer for him. Because wow. um, I've seen the work that it, the one that Terry brought, he didn't. You're, I'm not going to name names, yeah. but he didn't do that deer. He did not mount that deer for you guys. I mean, this is an, an award-winning taxidermist and was a <laughs> guy forever. Yeah. And then, you the know, and, I, this, the two, it's my two biggest deer ever. I just sort of happened to kill them in the same year. And they have, looks like they've had spinal surgery uh, down the backs of yeah. them. Like we, it, it took forever to get them like all, close to two years. And, and, Finally, I think the guy got pissed at us. A, 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 we just kept asking, like, hey, where yeah. are they at? Where are they at? And we got them, and they were in such bad shape. I've uh, never seen taxidermy so bad. And it was just like, oh, man, these are my two biggest deer I've ever killed. Well, they're, they're, They'll kill some bigger ones. That, well, that's the problem, Tim. <laughs> that was the last two years I had taxidermy. <laughs> so. Yeah, I, I've taken uh, – I have been able to save capes before. So I had a, a guy bring one in. And he's like, dude, I just don't like it. And I was able to soak, I put the whole deer head in a bucket, soaked it down, huh. got it rehydrated, and remounted it with the exact same cape nice. on it. Wow. So there's a chance that that we could save it. Um, so th- there's that. If that doesn't work, it's worth a try. But if that doesn't work, then we're looking at getting a new cape from, from somebody else's deer. Typically, if you got a deer that's getting a European mount uh, done, I try to let the word out to everybody that if you got a European mount, I'll typically just trade it out. I'll do the European mount for free just for a big cape. Cause I need capes all the time, especially with doing replicas. Every replica goes on a mount or the majority of them do. So I always need extra capes. So. Yeah. What, what does it cost typically for a guy to get a different cape for his mount? It, it it will depend. Um, typically, I, I would say minimum a cape is around 150 bucks. Okay. Um, they can go all the way to 300 bucks, 350. The the bigger ones, like I'm talking like a 26 inch neck, uh, you know, your five six year old deer, those things are like gold because mm-hmm. <laughs> normally you kill a deer that big, it's going to have a mount of rack on it. Yeah, you need a guy like uh, like Mark who you know kills 180 inch deer, be like that's. That's uh, that's not big enough to mount. <laughs> yeah, <God>. pretty rare. <laughs> the more likely scenario is down at Terry's, a management buck that's big and fat but has no rack. <laughs> no, that's typically what it is. Just a big old management buck. Yeah, yeah. So in the future, um, if you do want to do that, yeah, save save any management bucks that you know of, and um, yeah, we can uh, swap it out. Yeah. Good to know. John, early on in your career, did you end up having to take any weird animals? Like, here's my cocker spaniel. <laughs> I've had, yes. Yeah, I've had it all, I think. Um, I had, let me try to think here. I've had, so I have one guy, he killed, well, he killed a house cat. But he swears it's a bobcat. Oh, boy. This guy, the guy comes strolling in. He's got a cat. It's. I don't know. It's 16 inches long, maybe 18 at the most. Jeez. I think it's more like 16 inches long. And it's got a tail that's maybe three inches long. So he's like, here, I got this bobcat. And he gets it out of the sack. He lays it up there. And I'm like, dude, that's a that's, that's a house cat. He goes, oh, you too. And I'm like, well, what do you mean? <laughs> He'd already taken it to get it checked in with the oh. Missouri Department of Conservation because you have to check them in. Yeah. And they're like, dude, that's a, that's a house cat. Anyway, oh. Uh, he like he talked him in to give him the permit 
for the cat. He's like, this is a bobcat. So you know, they're like, I guess they were just like, whatever. So they wrote him the, the permit for it. They bring it in. <laughs> and it's literally, it's a tab cat with a dock tail. Oh, my <laughs> wow. So anyway, I'm telling them this. And he throws down like $800, eight $100 bills. Okay. And I was like, looks like I'm out in the house, cat. <laughs> <laughs> now, sir, did you want to put the leash on it or the leash off? It's about like that lady that just killed that. Uh, she thought oh, it was yeah, a wolf the, and it yeah, was a husky. Someone's pet dog. <laughs> yeah. Good. She's got a lot of shit over that. <laughs> Uh, for sure i didn't i didn't uh yeah i didn't make anything public about this one Ooh. i had a guy bring in in the back of his truck he had his black labrador that had just passed away oh. and he wanted a bear skin rug made out with the head Ooh. on the table lay it out like oh. a bear skin and uh i didn't take that one in uh yeah. but i have people call all the time about pets i used to more than now but yeah it was i mean it was just it's just a thing people want their pets done um, yeah I, I mean, yeah. it's weird to have your dog sitting there in the corner as a it? mount. <laughs> like, hey, but then it, at you. <laughs> it's a step farther to want it to become a rug that you oh, yeah, lay so, on the floor yeah. or you hang on the wall. <laughs> it's not like yeah. it's that big. <laughs> yeah, all right. Yeah, you're like roll yeah. around on it. <laughs> uh, I mean, these are some pretty weird stories. But is that the weirdest story you've ever had? You got like a. <laughs> um let me think that was that was pretty weird for sure um just weird in general I, I do mainly deer so i got a lot of weird deer stories but uh one of my favorites is a guy um he brought in it, so it's like open and day of deer season a rifle season and he brings in he's a farmer he's got a feed bucket like a mineral bucket you know there may be two foot across and maybe mm -hmm. two foot tall or whatever mm -hmm. and he's got this deer sticking out of it with the rat coming out and he backs in the, the shop and he literally, it's like he took a chainsaw and cut behind the rib cage straight across. So he's got a half a deer he brings in. Uh, there's, I'm assuming that he just shot it, you know, at this point, pretty bad in the middle. And he just decided, ah, we'll just, I'll just bring him the front half. And so I have to hang it up kind of by the ribs and skin it out. So anyway, I chalked that up to just, well, he, he made a mistake. Until the next year, he comes in with the same thing. He's got a feed bucket what? with a half a deer in it. And apparently, this is just the way this guy skins his deer out. He just cuts the deer in half and brings it. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> He's using a saw saw. <laughs> yeah. I, I, yeah, chainsaw. I don't know what he uses, but. Uh, I bet it's yeah. messy. <laughs> Holy heck. Do you yeah. think he just yeah. didn't um, know how to I process I get to hear every deer story that has ever been told. Ugh. Uh, <laughs> You can imagine. Yes, and a lot of them are entertaining, at least. But uh, but they're all pretty much the same story. You know, everybody's excited to tell their story. You know, they just killed the biggest deer of their life, or or whatever. So I'm the guy. I guess that's what I get paid to do. I have to listen to the story as well. Yeah, like you know tender. what? The, Mark and Terry, like we, we, especially when we would go to the trade shows back in the day, like we'd get approached by everybody with you know. Let me tell you. Yeah, I got a story for you. And it used to be they'd have uh, actual physical pictures and they'd have an album to show of all the deer they oh, killed and they'd yeah, take yeah, you through yeah. every single one. Well, then once the cell phone, you know, the, uh, smartphones became popular, then you're sitting there looking through all their pictures on the smartphone and they want to tell you every th – there's two parts about it. First, they have to find the photo in their photo album. <laughs> They're never prepared. Yeah. <laughs> so that takes a long time of just – flinging through like thousands of photos <laughs> to find the one and then they got to tell you the story so it's uh i can uh, sympathize with you on that one because it uh they're always long they're always long stories yeah yeah and they they tend to be almost always the same story somehow <laughs> yeah. or another right oh i got a story for you you never heard of oh i heard that yesterday actually <laughs> So, so John here is kind of in that Kansas city area. And when the Royals, when the Kansas city Royals went to, you know, the, when they were really good a few years back and going to the world series, team. that's a sports team, Tim, okay. they, John had a full moose, was it a moose, right? A full moose yeah, mount full body moose, yeah, oh, for sure. that he'd bring into, uh, to the, st to the parking lot or whatever for the yeah. tailgating and, and uh, it was always on the news and national news and all kinds of stuff. <laughs> well, so uh, Mike Moustakis was uh, was on our team. Ah. And uh, so everybody say moose. So anyway, I had a moose laying around. And it was like, well, let's do a big baseball. Actually, we're more 
uh, kind of bandwagon fans because they were doing really good. And <laughs> like right now, I don't even watch baseball, but it was that was like a really fun like three year span. And we go there all the time uh, with this big moose. And I mean, we'd have lines of people, hundreds of people, stop by for pictures, news crews. I mean, it, it was it was definitely fun. And then so I bring the thing home, and it just got in the way. I had it out in the yard one time. Uh, well, for a few months, it was just out in the pasture. As Jeez. if you drive by and there's a moose stand out in the pasture. <laughs> and uh, we had a we had a, a a police chase, and they had this guy on the run in like in our area. We live in the country, and so they got a news chopper or, or maybe a police chopper just you know, going around and stuff. And they're like circling my mm. moose, like what in the hell is there a moose doing out this path? <laughs> <laughs> so anyway. Got tired of that, and we took the that moose down to the river. We put 18 pounds of tannerite down in the body, Jeez. and then we went back about I don't know maybe three four hundred yards and shot it. Oops. And this thing absolutely disintegrates into thin air. Uh, it's on wow. YouTube. Go to uh, you have to look up. Uh, I don't know. Look, type in moose tannerite. <laughs> Something, Something but it, it's under the uh, unfiltered outdoors YouTube page. But uh, it, it the whole episode is on there, it's it's epic. This is probably a, a hundred foot flame that comes up. We got some slow motion stuff of this thing just going into <laughs> thin air. That's pretty funny. You hillbilly, <laughs> <laughs> that might be the wildest story he's got. Yeah, geez, I mean, that's good marketing though. <laughs> oh, big time. You imagine if you would have put that yeah. cat. Like, I don't, I don't know where we're promoting anything, though. <laughs> <laughs> Just relative <laughs> ignorance. We're going to blow this thing up. I should have thought about that. Yeah. It, it, John, with seeing so many hides, like, I wonder, do you like weird parasites ticks like the, yeah, you just gotta see a lot of goofy Tick stuff picks. in <laughs> uh, there's a ton of ticks i wouldn't say well if i have parasites i don't know about it um, but, um <laughs> yeah, that, actually that might explain a lot of things um, no. uh, so um ticks no uh, i mean ticks yes lots of ticks uh the thing that gets me most would be infections like yeah. I have cuts all the time, just messing with, yeah. you know, the stuff and just any kind of bacteria. I've ended up in the dang hospital for, well, three different times. I was there for like six days, like <laughs> one day. So this guy had a, uh, had a, a rep or a, a velvet mule deer. Okay. okay. And he wanted to skull a European mount done with the velvet. So you can't just stick that thing in a bucket of boiling water. It's going to boil the velvet off. So I was like, okay, I'm going to cut the bases of the, ho the horns completely off. I'm going to do the skull, reattach the horns back on. Okay. So I do that and I'm drilling through the bottom of the horns so I can attach them to the skull. And I poked a little hole in, in my palm with the drill bit. I poked through I'm like, ah, oh, crap, you know, it didn't even hurt, whatever. It only went in like a quarter of an inch. So I'm deer hunting later that night. No biggie. And I go to pick up my bow. I got a deer coming out and my hand doesn't work. Oh. It, I can't grip my bow at all. I could barely climb down the stand. I was in a ladder stand. What, like, what the heck's going on? So I go to bed. Um, the next morning, I can see the infection, like the red streaks oh, up, no. all the way up to my elbow already. And it's like, wow. oh, crap. So I go in and they, they sent me like straight to the burn unit. And so in the burn unit, apparently they're really good with infections, uh, obviously with, with burns, the sure. tropical burns. So they hooked me up to all these IVs. I'm in there for five or six days. I can't Jeez. remember now. Trying to suck this infection out. I don't know what's in antler and what happens when it gets in your skin, but it, I mean, it messed me up. Uh, I've got a few of those stories. Um, they just, yeah, it's the hazard. <laughs> wow. Unreal. That's pretty bad hazard. <laughs> yeah. Here in yeah. our work, I mean, our biggest hazard is tripping over a, a the toilet in the bathroom. <laughs> yeah, breathing that stink air. Who knows what's in there? Yeah. See, I'm not the guy that's gonna like jump a a motorcycle or four wheeler and then crash and break my neck. I don't do that kind of crazy stuff, but yeah. I'll find my way to the hospital. Some other <laughs> I'll go systemic somehow. Um, so, John, like, if guys maybe have uh, a head in their deep freeze right now and they're wanting to pick a deer hunt. A taxiderm. <laughs> I mean, sounds like 
John will do anything. John's got range. <laughs> got enough <I> money. Mean, <laughs> <laughs> drop that $800 and it's going to make it happen. But yeah. what, what, should, like, what are some red flags? You walk into a taxidermist shop and you're like, oh, maybe this isn't the place I want to bring my treasure trophy. Um, I, so I would say, so a lot of people don't know what a good deer mount looks like. That That's yeah. maybe the first thing. Cause if you put, if you just have one deer head in the wall with nothing to compare it to, it may not look too bad. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, I don't know. <laughs> it, it obviously needs to look good. I, I see things that other people don't see, but you guys have seen enough deer heads too, that you know what a good one looks like in a, and a bad one. So I would say maybe a gut feeling that like, Hey, if you're going off of looks, does that, does that deer head look good? Or does it look back at you would be <laughs> one thing. Mm. Uh, the nose is another thing. The nose is, uh, you know, flat, like in color, or it doesn't have a gloss, you know, deer, I, at least I prefer to have a deer's nose, a little bit glossy that looks more realistic. And then the paint around the eyes, if you, Look at this mount. It's got big black circles around his eyes, just painted, which I've seen plenty of. Uh, that is a, it's a pretty giant red flag, too, because that's not what a deer looks like. And that's very common for to see on like crappy taxidermy is there's a bad paint job around the eyes. Hmm. I, f- uh, I feel like when you, the ears are also a good indicator. Like I've seen a yeah. lot of mule deer ears on white tails <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> yes, on yeah. shitty taxidermists. Yeah. 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 Um, so that would be your earbuds get too long. Yeah. And then, you know, if you end up with an eight inch ear, you know, on a deer, that's, that's, that's too long. So yeah, a lot of people will, will not a lot of people, but on bad tax term, you'll notice long earbuds or the opposite, the very opposite is short ear, but like no earbuds. And then you just look, it just looks like an ear kicking out of the back. A deer uh, never heard him coming. Now I'm looking at all the taxidermy in here. I'm looking real <laughs> close at everything. Oh, you guys are probably fine there. Um, uh, that Other than um, the brisket would be another thing to look at. Wow. If, uh, the armpits and the brisket, uh, it should be groomed nicely. Uh, with coming, the brisket should come down to a nice point. Yeah. Um, and you know, you're you don't want your armpits rolling over onto the side of like the shoulders of your deer. Um, that's probably getting nitpicky. I don't think a whole lot of people are going to notice that, but, um, should you see yeah. a seam in the hide anywhere? Say, say that again. Should you see a seam in the hide anywhere? <laughs> no, but you're not going to know that till you get a home. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That that's bad. Um, and I've seen a bunch of that, uh, guys bringing in, like when I'll do replicas, a lot of times they're already mounted to bring them in. I'll have to take the, the antlers out of that deer to replicate it. And, uh-huh. uh, and yeah, it, the majority of them, when you part the hair, you can see the seam where they tried to, to sew it up. Yeah. And typically it's either a bad tan because it's wanting to shrink, like we we're talking about, mm-hmm. uh, or they didn't put any glue there. And, and so there's nothing to hold that hide in place after they sew. They might have sewed it up and it was tight when they left it, but as it dries, it, it, pulls apart ah. you know so. a, a great place to find crappy taxidermy seems to be the sporting goods department at walmart or any sporting good department <laughs> i don't know if they have a deal with like local, local taxidermists like you give us your stuff that no one came to to claim and we'll throw it up there and <laughs> that or like a cracker barrel <laughs> oh yeah yeah <laughs> old old messed up taxidermy yeah mm-hmm what are some of your favorite poses? Like just you as a kind of a, yeah. a, a connoisseur of, of deer. Uh, yeah. My favorite uh, pose is going to be a semi sneak. So if you think about um, the, the types of forms, there's a full upright. That's going to be like a, a deer on the wall. He's fully alert. His, his neck is straight up, almost parallel with the wall near Okay, then down from that is going to be a semi upright, which comes down a little bit more. You're going to go down to a semi sneak, that's a, down a little bit more, that's, which is what I prefer. And then you got your full sneak, which is sticking almost parallel with the floor. Okay, so a semi sneak, I that's just what I prefer, but I, I feel like it's a more natural, relaxed look uh, that a deer, if he's just standing there, that's and not alert, that's the position he's in. Okay, it's just, just hanging out. Either that or semi upright, but I just prefer the the semi sneak. And you think about it this way: too. if you have a, a giant rutted neck buck, 
that, you know, maybe it's a 26 inch neck uh, and you get a full sneak, the long, the further his neck or his head gets away from his body, if he's sneaking out, the, the skinnier his neck gets because he's stretched out. So as he picks his head up, that neck bulges back together and you're going to get a bigger looking neck with, with a semi sneak. Gotcha. Um, and then you have a, an option between a left, right, uh, left mount, a right mount or a straight. And I, I prefer not to do a straight unless a guy is just dying to have one look straight off the wall. Mm -hmm. But I think they look dead when they're just looking straight forward. Cause there's really no action to them. Yeah. You can put an ear left or right, but that doesn't do a whole lot. So if you have a deer that's looking left or right, he's just looking a little bit. It's not a huge turn. Um, you can nearly put it anywhere in your house, no matter which way it's turning. And then you can do something with the ears to kind of balance the mount out. So if, you know, if he's looking left, that means his shoulder is on the left side of his head and you can kind of put one ear, uh, floating around a little more forward and then one ear back. And that just, to me, that there's no symmetry to it. Mm. It, it looks more natural okay. than if a deer just, you know, looks the same on both sides. Sure. Um, and then, so there's that. And then the other thing that I really enjoy doing is a, a pedestal mount. So a floor pedestal, you can do a wall pedestal too, but what that's going to do is give you a full shoulder on one side of the deer. And then the back of it's going to be finished off in like some felt, uh, some leather, a uh, little braided rope around the back side. Dang. It's just going to be a nice detail. You're going to get more of a mount too. You're, you're going to get more body mm -hmm. on your deer, which to me, it, comes into the artistic side of it is how do I turn this deer into a piece of art? And I do that with uh, like a floor pedestal. I build custom bases. Everything I do base wise is I build right there in the shop uh, <laughs> with my own two hands, but you can do any kind of base you can think of. I even put motors in some of them. I just uh, two weeks, three weeks ago, I went to, Ana or to ATA for analogics. They had three replicas done. Uh, one, a Lee Likoski's buck from maybe last year, and then two, Aaron Gaines's buck, and then Anthony Peoples buck. Giant deer, all of them are. So replicated those, mounted them up, and then the base, uh, eh, it might have been 30 inches high, but has a motor in it. So these deer will spin uh, on, a, on a center point, and so you're just standing there, but this deer spins around in a circle That's as cool. you're standing there, and then you can see all the way around the deer so instead of walking around the deer you can if a deer has trash at the back you know it comes around and they're very mesmerizing to sit there and, <laughs> and watch it's pretty neat but, it was uh, it was cool looking i saw him it was awesome actually <laughs> yeah yeah and guess what <clears throat> i got sick that's what happens when you go to ata yeah, and you get yeah. cold <laughs> and i'm still not over it it's three weeks ago oh yeah. this should yeah. just stop great shows <laughs> You, a little known fact, John, he actually made the trophies for the inaugural season of Critical Mass, the one where we had the big oh, set and cool. all that stuff. Yeah, oh, yeah. John made those yeah, trophies yeah. for us. Yeah, those were cool. They were cool. What do you think about our trophies? <laughs> These. Yeah, uh, I, was, is that a, I can't tell. Is that a squirrel? It's a skunk. It's uh, based oh. on how our seasons went. <laughs> You got, oh, we're you trophy hunters. Tags. So is that per tag? You get a skunk per. Oh no, I'd have a lot then. This whole table would be filled up with. These them. are more <laughs> comprehensive. I'd trophies. have two from Illinois and have two from Missouri. <laughs> <laughs> Dang, what happened? You guys, you just didn't see what you, you were talking. You're stupid. <laughs> Hold on, I, I'll tell you. You suck, Matt. That's what happened. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, I just, uh, I, I don't know, man. I couldn't see. I just couldn't get one to walk in front of me in daylight. I mean, that just, I had a real issue with nocturnal deer this year, worse than ever, everywhere I went. So this is one of those kind of, kind of seasons. That um, happened. It happened to me too. I, I did shoot the deer that I was, uh, after, um, but it was, uh, I guess it was a high shoulder shot just in no man's land. And two days later, he's out chasing does just uh, fine. And that was it. That was my season. That's frustrating, isn't it? Yeah, it, it, yeah, I guess it's all right. My daughter was the only provider this year in our household. Oh, she cool. she killed a really nice, like a six year old buck, and Jeez. Uh, yeah, that was the only meat we got. Well, that's cool. That's cool, though. Were you with her when she killed? Yeah, her? yeah, 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 yeah. It was uh, 
This first Sunday of the gun season. Yeah, it was great. It was like a 15 minute hunt. It was oh, perfect. Even better. Perfect. Yeah. 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 For kids, Jeez. that's like the perfect. <laughs> yeah. Oh, perfect she kills two slammer bucks. She's killed three bucks and she, well, she's 10, but she, she should be 10 next month, but she was, she's nine. She killed her first deer at six and like 150 inch deer, wow. you know, it's like, not, I mean, I'm a good, you know, guide, good dad. Yeah. <laughs> we acted spoiled. all pissy tor- towards her the rest of the day. I oh, hope yeah. you enjoy your huge deer. <laughs> daddy put you on. Yeah. Well, That's we I got want. some shenanigans that we always go through. We could, you could either depart here or you could stick around for another 10 minutes or so and, and, and hear the endure. Yeah. Endure. It's up to I you. I might as well endure. Yeah. All yeah. Right. If He's like, leave well, now, I got to go back to building the house. So <laughs> I just, I can, I can handle another 10 minutes to hang out. <laughs> oh, well, let's okay. do it then. All right. Well, let's hit that real wild clip. So this comes from us, from one of our editors, Mike. Who just weird stuff happens to this guy? It's crazy. Oh, Mike Miranda, one of our video editors. <laughs> yes, oh, okay. I don't think I've seen this one. Really? No. Okay. Well, Mike's up in his bedroom, I believe, looking out the window, oh, and there's a hen out his window on the roof, just yeah. walking by. So he's, you know, in su- you know the suburbs of St. Louis here. The playground in the backyard. And he he's got a uh, is the uh, you kind of see it. Was it a what kind of Beard of Dragon. Is that what it is? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Rezzy is his name. And he's her on, name. Her name. That's right. It's female lizard. And he said he, he thought that the turkey was there kind of pecking at the window to try to get that. Ooh. They'll eat lizards. Is, that's yeah. next level. I mean, because yeah. he looks like he's up uh, on the second floor here. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's weird. That hen is, uh, it's, a, it's not a peeping Tom, it's a peeping Jenny. <laughs> I just made that up on the that's fly. That's pretty good. That's what you get when you tune into the show, folks. <clears throat> but we've shown clips before from Mike of giant deer like walking <laughs> yeah. through his driveway, eating it's his nuts. flowers. Yeah, I want to go to Mike's house. Yeah, we should start hunting over at Mike's. Just hang out in his room, <laughs> and play Nintendo, and just wait for something to walk by the window. <laughs> so there's your real walk clip Let's of the day. Do that. Okay, and then we got a question from Chad today. All yeah. right. So the question of the day is. Brought to you by Tacticam. Share your hunt in crisp 4K with incredible image stabilization on the new Tacticam 6.0. All right, Chad. Hey, this is Chad Nugent. I would uh, like to know Mark Drury's opinion on the upcoming weather patterns for this year. I've heard him talk a lot about El Nino and La Nina and the amount of rainfall expected. And a lot of us will be ordering seed and different things based off of what we expect for the spring uh, rains coming up. Uh, would just love to have uh, his opinion and his foresight on what he expects and what he's planning for for the upcoming year. Okay. So Thank you. Enjoy the podcast. Chad's going to be disappointed. Tim? I reached out to Mark. Okay. <laughs> like, we can't answer this <laughs> yes. for Chad. Yeah, so uh, Mark sent along an article from The Hill uh, talking about how the effects of La Nina are still with us currently, but will soon be coming to an end. And frankly, meteorologists don't know if there will be an El Nino that will happen in 2023. They just, they don't, it's too far ahead. They don't know. So, so how does that affect the planting? It's a bit, Mark just said, it's a big fat. We don't know right now you're pretty much going to plant the same times of year. It's whether or not you're going to have to replant three, two, three, four times, which is what happened to a lot of people last year. Yeah. You know, the replanting over and over and over and hell it was into September until we really got any kind of precipitation there to the summer. Mm -hmm. Now that really doesn't affect your spring plantings. And John, do you have any input on, on this stuff? I mean, when do you normally, uh, you know, does weather patterns or, or like big weather events like that, do you look ahead of that type of thing or, or is it pretty much, Hey, this is the time of year I plant and I just work around if the, if the front's coming through, try to get it in the ground beforehand. Yeah. Yeah. I do as little as possible for food plots. I, I actually don't even have my own food plot. I uh, help my brother plant his, but yeah, it's pretty much, Hey, it's going to rain tomorrow. We better get this in the ground. <laughs> <laughs> you're I don't look that far you're in the majority of us yeah 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 we have so much ag where i hunt that a food plot i mean i know it would be uh like a green field but my point is 
our farmer, if, if you could put a food plot there, he's putting crop there. There's no, no, no doubt about it. Yeah. If there's trees there, he's taking the trees out and farming there too. So I just don't have anywhere that I could even put a food plot. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. All right. Let's hop over into the wildlife word. It is brought to you by Tracker Off-Road. Get the job done with relentless power and class leading quietness. Class leading. It's a class. It's full of class, this Tracker EV. And full of quietness also. Yeah. I got it. It, it is pretty awesome. It's more than anything. It's it's got a lot of power to it. That's what would surprise you. Power and quietness. Yeah. If you're looking for something that's not quiet, don't look at a track at a tracker because they got nothing but quietness. Well, unless you go to the 800, that's a side by side. It's true. <laughs> so just blue <laughs> holes all through your theory, oh. Tim. <laughs> <laughs> Way to thank the sponsor. <laughs> no, they got. A side by side, or oh, they yeah. got like a golf cart type EV. Yeah, two different true. things. They call you're the misleading the 800 SX. They say this is from the 800 SX site. They say class leading quiet. It is quiet. The 800's quiet and sneaking up on deer. Yeah, <laughs> Do, doing a Jefferson County drive by. Oh boy, that's what I call them. Okay, this one is a little... You got to follow the bouncing ball on this one. All right, this is a multiple choice question, John. So pay attention because you get to answer it first. No pressure. Okay, this this scale quantifies the harshness of a region's winter on wildlife. By assigning points to each day, the low temp is below zero. And every day that has an average snowpack of 18 inches or more. I lost me. So it's essentially, (laughs) it's a scale that measures how difficult of a winter it is. Okay. This scale is called A, the CWI, which stands for the Chili Willy Index. B, the FFC freeze factor chart. C, the WSRI, or the Wildlife Solidification Risk Index. I'm going with that. Freeze them solid. Or D, the WSI, the Winter Severity Index. All right, I'm going with that. John, which is Yeah, it? typically if I didn't know the answer, which I don't, um, but you always go with C. I think statistically C is a more common uh, answer in multiple choice. So, I was always which, going with D. But I'm going to go with D. Oh, huh. wow. And, and here's why. I'm going to – C and D are pretty close in the, in the, uh, the acronym there, so – um, it's one of those two for sure. And solidification it. seems seems like a Tim. Somebody made that up. Yeah, <laughs> so it's not even a real word. D as well, but man, D. I in multiplication, I always thought that it, or in multiplication and and these types of questionnaires, mm-hmm. I always thought D was your highest probability, all through oh, yeah. high school and college. I hmm. Google that. <laughs> I guess I never had to guess at the answer. Well, was, you uh, started doing it wrong. <laughs> Oh, you knew the answers. <laughs> you idiot. <laughs> well, not all of us are smart. <laughs> so the answer, your guys' guts served you well. Hey, look at it. Uh, your gut? <laughs> yeah. Why? Large. I don't want to. I follow it. Can't make me. <laughs> it, is, it is D, the WSI, the Winter Severity Index. And so they take kind of the winter time and they look at days where the low temperature dips below zero. If, if there's one of those, that gets a point. If there is a day that has an average snowpack of 18 inches or more, that gets a point. And they add all those up at the end of the winter, and they come up with a WSI, a Winter Severity Index score, for that particular winter in that region. I'll be dang. Learn something new every day, Tim. Yeah, you do. 18 inches of snow is a lot of snow. Yeah, like... Whoever gets that. <laughs> well, I don't know, you know if I've ever seen that in Missouri. Br- Brian, Brian we, well, th- this is more like Wisconsin, Michigan, kind of those yeah. more northern states where deer yards are kind of an important component to a, win- a, a, a herd survivability factor. But Brian Weiss just posted a picture of a doe walking in snow that's I like that. up to her undercarriage. Yeah. That's a lot of snow. Yeah. And you think about getting away from a predator and something like that or just Tough. finding browse that it just – that's why that's one of the 18 inches or more of snowpack is part of the so index. so we have these wildlife words that tim it's really a wildlife phrase it's really what it is every week and it's misleading tim for a long time kept using a phrase that it turns out we, tim didn't realize this but well, it was long a, time equals one episode no you had used it in several episodes 
Which, you have. Like? What do you mean? Like, like which episodes? I, I mean, this was two years ago. It was a year and a half ago. Two years ago. But he used it, and it was a sexual term <laughs> for a very disgusting sexual act. And he kept using it over and over and over. I could and, not say it. And, and then he put it in one of our wildlife words as one of the choices. And uh, so our social team decided that they're going to use these wildlife words as like things that they're going to post on our social, on our social media. <laughs> the, first they use, the first one they put on Twitter. <laughs> Out of the I just saw it on Facebook <laughs> yesterday. I think I was like, <laughs> like of all, sorry, it's got that GD. Uh, I couldn't believe it. Honestly, like that's the one. And we keep using it everywhere. Nobody's picked up on it, but Tim here is a real well, sicko. No one's a social deviant uh, except for, the couple guys in the because <laughs> I thought I was in our making up a, a word that was full of delight and whimsy, and no. you guys were like you know what that is. <laughs> it was what disgusting. was it, Tim? What I'm was the word? Might it. as well say it. No, you've been saying it. No, it's being used. Once, all once over I the learned, place. once I learned what Urban Dictionary said it was, I stopped sounded saying. like pumpkin, but there was another letter in it. <laughs> so there you go. Nice job. <laughs> so yeah, you do learn something new on every show. <laughs> whether you want to or not whether was it's it useful. Blumpkin? What? it here was he Blumpkin wasn't it yeah the producer Matt just came in with a, a, a Jeopardy answer what is <laughs> Blumpkin <laughs> <laughs> if I knew it I had to say it uh, alright I yeah, appreciate it <laughs> very Jeopardy like <laughs> right. uh, do, yeah, Alex, uh, Alex I have the answer what uh, is <laughs> how's he doing yeah, he's dead. Okay, next one. What's all right? We got sh- shout outs, Tim. Start shouting it out. Uh, Alan's heart just broke over there. All right. So again, thank you to everyone who dropped a five star review for don't us. Don't thank him yet. We we get Let's paid. We get paid by those. If we don't Do get we? any, that we don't get paid. Man, maybe only ben, you're getting paid. I'm ben, not getting paid for this. I assume we're getting paid. Ben Malone says, life-changing. Probably the single greatest thing technology has ever given the outdoor industry. Okay, guys. Matt and Tim are a wealth of knowledge. All right. I listened to an episode before all of my hunts, and the deer basically just come out and give up. <laughs> Pair what you learned from these guys on the podcast on the podcast with DeerCast. Download that if you haven't. And your tag will be punched in no time. Keep them coming, fellas. Boy, this is Ben Malone. Mm. I like the poetry he weaved and wove through this, but I think nice he job, was man. being sarcastic. <laughs> I don't think I don't think people on the internet are sarcastic. Mm. Good, good I think point. They're pretty genuine. All right, last piece here, John. I'm sure now you're regretting staying, but <clears throat> this is the last piece we have for you. Every week, we have a thing called the Rack Pack. It's a private Facebook group over on, uh, on Facebook. <laughs> uh, and it's basically our listeners and Where's deviants, other deviants. <laughs> so <laughs> every week, Tim lists out a bunch of names and new Rack Pack members. Every week, I read them. Every week, I mess them up. And every week, there's a fake name in there that I have to yep. uncover. Mm-hmm. Uh, I already found it. All right. So we got Mark Tidwell, Lakey. <laughs> uh, the Pond, Lakey Pondy McMahon. Johnson. Oh, Lakey McMahon. <laughs> so I would have thought that was the fake name, but there's maybe another it, one coming maybe up. Maybe it is. Brett Balsler, Donnie Isaacs, Joey Tremblay. Ooh, he's French. Mm. Owen Neff, Bud Tessier, and then Shemel Buckerdo. <laughs> I think it's Shamale. Oh, Shamale. <laughs> the accent over the E there. Shemel Buckardo. Shamale Buckardo. <laughs> so that's the fake one. But Lakey McMahon, is that real? Or Lakey did you put McJetsky a second fake sounds one? fake. Did you put a second fake one in? I can only afford one fake name every week. It takes nine hours of dedicated <laughs> time at Dury Outdoors for me to come up with this. I try to be judicious with my time. You should never put it as the last name, though, like what you did there. Mm-hmm. If you're going to go with a name like Shamale Buckardo, you need to put that in the middle. But man, Lakey McMahon, I would have swore you you were fake, sir or ma'am. I can't. I don't know if Lakey. Well, is. we don't know this. We don't know that for Shamale either. <laughs> yeah. So the 
the reason for Shamali, we have an article on DeerCast oh, <laughs> about pseudo hermaphroditic deer. Tying it in. Deep tease. <laughs> Speaking of. In the business, so, this is teasing. Then. What business are we talking about? Uh, <laughs> a, 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 just a half-assed one, honestly. So if you want to learn podcast. about uh, a gender-confused deer, the article Sarah Hanadel wrote for DeerCast on Man, pseudo hermaphroditic deer. Who did deer. I just see killed one? Just killed one. Somebody in the industry. And it was, a, oh, it was a Caleb Kiske, Don and Candy's ah, son. Okay. Killed a giant doe that, you know, with a, with a rack. <laughs> Not that kind of Good rack. <laughs> Different kind of rack. <laughs> Antlers. But it was huge. It was crazy. I had well, only, I mean, I've heard that a few times before. Joe Schultz, back in the day when he was with us at Dre Outdoors, he killed one. Uh, in Illinois, yeah, because I'll never forget. He got walked up. He's like, well, "God damn, it's a doe!" <laughs> he lifted I always up the check leg before I shoot. <laughs> well, wouldn't you shoot? You'd still shoot oh, a buck. No, hundred percent, you would. It's disgusting, Whatever. and you're disgusting for even Whatever. saying that. You're a liar. I'm you sir for are a liar. <laughs> <laughs> and John's like, what? You and your mom What's happening right now? Yeah. Sorry, John. Hey, you chose to stay. <laughs> this is, this is your I could have had a whole wall put up by now. <laughs> John's doing something constructive with his life. Anytime we give people the choice to stay or go and they stay, they always regret it. <laughs> we should tell us or tell people that. We do. It's not a good track I, I, record. I basically did. Hey, you're going to regret it's this. So. It's true. Wow. Yeah, look where your politeness got you, John. Yeah, I know. Audi will never get back. episode 305, which is probably – some sort of a special episode to have me on. Like yes. It's five after 300. Yep. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> John, are, are, you, are you at a point in your business where you're still taking taxidermy? Or are you pretty much full up right now? Um, if it is, uh, if, if it's a, a pedestal mount, like a custom piece, I will always take those because you just can't go to any taxidermist and get that. I kind of have a special way of, of doing mine. At, okay looks like something I would do. So I take those. If it's just a standard shoulder mount, um, I, I can take a few, but I usually don't have that problem. I'll take maybe 25 or 30 local heads, and then everything else I do is from out of state. Uh, so, yeah. I, if you got one and you're just dying for a good mount, you can reach out. But uh, I don't actively okay. try to try to get more work. <laughs> Where can people find you at? Uh, I just, Facebook is a good, a good spot. John Dittmer, Spring Creek taxidermy. Um, I've got Instagram as well, but, uh, yeah, that'd be a good way to reach out. Sure. We'll link you up in the show notes. Yeah. That'd be great. Well, John, we appreciate you joining us and, uh, keep up the great work. I know this, that if you can please, and, and the deer world, please Mark or Terry are both, you're doing <laughs> something. So Big time. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Yeah, they are a pleasure to work for, though. <laughs> no. <laughs> You're lying. John. I don't have to work with them every day. I well, see, they're paying him, so he say, he can yeah. say, well, I guess they're paying us, too. Never I, mind. They paid. are a pleasure to work with. <laughs> you know what? <laughs> I, I enjoy these I guys thoroughly. <laughs> <laughs> I, I uh, This was um, last year. I took Mark's deer up. I had him done a little bit early. I think it was... It's before turkey season. It was it was pretty early. I had his, all of his ear done, so I dropped him off at a shed and put him in there. And Wade had met me there. And um, about three weeks later, Mark was asking me about his deer heads. And I'm like, well, no, I, I texted him. I said, how'd you like the deer head? He goes, what deer head? Uh, and I'm like, I dropped all your deer off at the shed. He's like, what? <laughs> Why didn't you say anything? And I said, Wade was there when I dropped him off. He's well, that, like, I've been with Wade every single day since you've been here. <laughs> and he hasn't said anything. <laughs> Better hope they don't have mice. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, they, they were in the locker room, so oh, okay. it was all good there. They were safe. Yeah. Yeah, I can uh, imagine goodbye. the conversation between Mark and Wade. Oh, Hey, Wade, uh, quick question for you. Yeah. Nothing about that story surprises me. <laughs> not, not one part of that. Oh, so. good times. All well, right. we appreciate that, you. I might have messed up, though, because he probably was going to expect all of his deer turkey season now. So Yeah. Oh, you know, but that's the thing about those guys. I don't even think they that this is not to sound like a, 
it's going to sound bad, but they've killed so many big deer. Mm. I honestly don't think they think about it like that. And they get them when they'll get them. And that's that. Now I, you know, maybe, maybe I'm wrong in that. I know dad killed the biggest deer of his life this year. So maybe he's more anxious to get that one, but, uh, yeah, he, he killed some slammers. <laughs> yeah. He had a good, good and year. Horses deer. Holy smokes. Is that one big? Yeah. Yeah, they had a fun. They may have a real crappy year next year because I don't know what's left. <laughs> no joke. So, anyways, well, we got nothing left. <laughs> I'm sure the audience doesn't either. No, they're, they're gone. <laughs> All right. Well, we appreciate you, man. Thanks for jumping Except on. For, thank you, guys. All right. Thanks, John. All right. All right. Yeah. Thanks, everyone, for listening and watching, sharing with your friends. We appreciate it. Hopping over the rack pack. It's all good. Until next time, peace out. DeerCast is now supercharged with maps. Get ahead of your game with killer new features like live Doppler radar, wind check out to five days, virtual rain gauges, GPS path tracking, and more. Plus, get our 14-day revolutionary DeerCast prediction and access to DeerCast track. Prep, predict, and pursue with DeerCast. We're adding new videos every week, so make sure to click that subscribe button and check out all of our amazing content. This episode of DOD TV was brought to you by Leopold.